two, one, zero. Let's give her a hand. Everybody, Mary. Jewel. Welcome. Thank you. Art and technology. Mm -hmm. This is the class. Um, I wanted to talk about, look up here. I wanted to talk about where do we find inspiration? Risha, where do you find inspiration for des designing? Or what do you look at? What kind of magazines do you look at? Car racing? Car racing? Everything. Everything. Cool. Everything. Randy, where, what, what kind of magazines are you? You ever? You dig in music, right? So you go to, who's gone to Barnes & Noble in the magazine section? You just hang out there. Maybe you get a coffee and take a stack of magazines like that. Tea. I won't ask what you drink. Um, but who does that at Barnes & Noble? David, do you do that? You go in, you get yourself your coffee, you sit down. What are these magazines? Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, GQ. Cool. I love GQ. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, what do you look at? You don't? What do you look at? How do, how, do you be, how do you become stimulated as an individual? What do you, how do you get some picture of what grown-ups are doing out there? They're treating you like kids in here. You know? James, what do you look at? Listen up. I look at stuff like on the internet, on my image boards and whatnot. Who has Pinterest? I love Pinterest. I like it too. I'm not into it, but I love Pinterest. It is a girl. I'm doing something too now. I never did. A student got me onto really. I was on it, but I wasn't on it. Now I'm into Instagram. I'll be in a. I was in a line last night at Trader Joe's or whatever. I just flipped open the Instagram. Multitasking, and I was just looking at people because I'm on. I'm. I'm on this site with all these people who do these cool things with ruins and, and, and interest. At one, I'm on a surrealism site and all these guys are doing. I think it's fantastic. It stimulates me. I'm a designer. It, I gotta, this lecture now is about where do we find stimulation? When I was a kid, my daddy's a designer. Uh, or he designed college campuses. So ever since I was young, I was cutting up the little boards and this. Uh, a couple of my siblings are designers too, naturally. Um, so we were living it. We were breathing it. So I do clay. I do the 3D. I do drawing every day. I carry around a little uh, sketchbook. I'm obsessed with seeing what, and many of you guys, whether you want to be doctors or lawyers or whatever, you're stimulated by something, by music. How many stimulated by music? How many stimulated? So you go, you might go to, do you go to Barnes & Noble and get the music magazines? May I get fashion legs? Fashion. Who's stimulated by fashion? It's cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. Um, Alexander McQueen, who show, who saw that show Matt. at the Met? That was a the line was out the door, and I dig. I don't dig a lot of fashion designers, but I did. I dug his stuff. He committed suicide like three years ago. Young guy, you know, became a diva, whatever. Um, uh, fashion. Who likes design of cars or motorcycles? I love it. Love it, especially motorcycles because they seem they seem contained. You know, cars are cool, but they're expensive or whatever. And somehow, motorcycles are like this epitome of fitting the body on this machine. It's like to me, it's like a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. uh, how many love design of bikes, bikes and skateboards? Yeah. Love it. Yeah, I've seen you in the skateboard. I love I love fixies right now. I've loved them for two years. I got one, hundred bucks. Everyone know what a fixie is? Yeah. Fixed geared bike, man. Oh. They're the limit. And then they put the, they suck? Who said that? <laughs> and they put the nice uh, colored rims on them, and they're, they're just they're so light. you got to pedal everywhere, uphill, downhill, you're pedaling. It's a complete thing. I can be from Park Slope to Chinatown in 20 minutes over the, over the Brooklyn Bridge. I run into a few pedestrians on the Brooklyn Bridge, but... This is this lecture right now is like what and how and why are we stimulated? What do we bring in from the big world? And I hope it's not sugar and spice and everything nice. And we, we hope that ultimately when you grow up, there's this beautiful thing happened is that you want more roughage. Remember when you're a kid, all you wanted was sugar? You said, Mom, well, how about the candies first? How about the cookies first? How about the, that's, and you know after you get older, that's not good for you. Rots your teeth, makes you get heavy, all that bad stuff, right? 
you want the same thing of what stimulates you on the outside. Your, your taste in music might deepen, you know, might get a little better, you know. Might, so where do I go? I go to, you know, I, uh, 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 when I was a kid, what was it? I was your age. I was 18. I'd been a designer since my dad designed, and so I started designing theaters for the theater department at this Swedish college, Gustavus Adolphus, uh, for my undergraduate. And these dudes said, oh, wow, you're, you're kind of talented in design. We'll hire you under work study. So ever for four years, I was paid to design the sets for the, for the school. This was beneficial, but I, I started to look at sets and started to look at this metaphor. Here's, can, how can you hit that light right here? please. Um, this is a nice um, opera. Look at the circle. This is a model. And I started, I'm a real minimalist designer. I like minimalism. You know, you know what that is, Catherine? Yeah. Explain that to studio audience. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know the technical definition of it, but I, my impression of it is that it's just, you know, simplistic, clean lines, uh, not a lot of bling, not, not a, a lot, lot of gorp. Detail, it's not. Yeah. It's like the opposite of like. Here's just a circle, the yeah. ramp you can walk up, and thousands of light hanging down. So I was liking, <coughs> I was liking metaphor, things that you can put in a space that create instant metaphor. Even if it's a bike, um, Kevin, look up. Even if it's a bike, uh, a motorcycle is a metaphor of of, of, of a human being coupling with a machine and so forth. Metaphor of, they'll teach you a Pininfarina in Italy, one of the most, like the mecca of design. It's this, where they teach all car designers. They say sports cars are like women. Is that sexist? Sierra? Yes. It's sexist. Well, but why are sports cars like women? They're sleek. Sleek. They've got the, like the curve, curve. middle. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think they, that? why do you think that's done? Because... Cars advertising is targeted towards men. Yeah. Ooh. Because why? Because it's what they like. They like to drive fast things. Do you think, how many of you men like cars or motorcycles as your peacock feathers? <laughs> peacock feathers. Yeah, dude. Your plumage. <laughs> like, hey girl. To show up. Nice hey girl, ride. look, I got a car just like you. Sleek, beautiful, big eyes in front. No one? No. I feel like that's Mary, do you like a guy with beautiful plumage? <laughs> but he's got to be sensitive, right? <laughs> okay. I feel like the nice cars is kind of an outdated thing now. I don't know. Like, I feel like that's not really a... I agree. I feel like you can have a nice car and not spend a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Like, those Kias are great nowadays, right? Holy smokes. They're... they're and the new... what? What's the American... The Chevy... No, the Ford for 15000 bucks. What's What's that one? Yeah, Ford Focus, they redesigned. The Fords in Europe are a lot better designed than here. I don't know why. I don't know. They think Americans are stupid. So the American companies said, oh, we're stupid here. So they like stupid design. Meanwhile, in Europe, the Fords are great design-wise, sleek and well, well put together. Uh, I agree because my <coughs> father's generation, they keep talking about the cars, the carburetor, this, the, the linkage, the transmission. It's, I think it's the way we... Even me, with your generation, talk about the computer, right? How many have to have the latest cell phone? You all do. How many, have a, how many of you have a cell phone four years old? Rishi, put your lid down. How many have a cell phone four years old? Ryan, you're my hero, man. There you go. Uh, how many have a cell phone that is one year or less? You like the design, the interface. And what are we looking at? Here's, here are a bunch of set designs because this is in the theater department. We are looking at ways uh, set. I love this. This is Joseph Svoboda. This, I looked at a lot of Eastern European designers, not very American, that they just put these simple things on stage, simple lighting, and away you go, like Magritte, a big apple. Uh, <coughs> this is for Wagner's ring cycle, represents curves and, and things. Here's a, a woman's groin as part of a set, you know. Um, this is for a checkoff where they glued the furniture to the wall. Cool. All of these things were looking for the unusual, 
even the surreal in this setting. Here's, here's one of the guys I studied under at Yale. Um, he did this set. The set costs like three or four million bucks. Um, budgets, and this is his big metaphor for uh, Macbeth, the, the tree. Here's the sketches, how to conceive of something. If you see something, it's not good to copy it. What do we think about originality, Martin? In the West, originality is good. Can, do we, Sarah, should we be inspired by professionals? Um, I think that we need to be more creative in America. We tend to do the same thing over and over and over again. Right. We were supposed to be the creative country. I think many countries, many European countries have passed. I think even young Korea is passing us. And what, what was the traditional beef about Asia in creativity? They copied everything. But what do we copy from China? Everything. Everything. Gunpowder, spaghetti. What else did we steal? What did the Italians steal from China? What else? Spaghetti, gunpowder, paper, printing. All that stuff. Um, so spaghetti. this is... What? Not spaghetti. Not spaghetti. They were the Noodles, noodles. spaghetti. Yeah. What? It's not spaghetti. Yeah. Not spaghetti. It's not spaghetti. Italian thing, I think. Who went to China? Marco Polo. Stole it. But the pasta, yeah, the pasta. So I hate, you know, I've taught in Asia, whenever you said, oh, the Asians are not creative, they're, they're just drones, they're, they're copying what done before. There's, it's true to a certain extent, but I, I debate that. Because young, young Asia wants to do original things. Originality and creativity are moving up and kind of like what we, like Sierra said, what we should be. Often we'll seem crazy doing that, right, Martin? Because it's our language. It's our way of looking at the world. More sketches, more stuff. This was set in a warehouse. Um, this was cool. I'm just going to flip by this and then show you. So I'm inspired by what people I admire have done. Um, I, I'm, at my age, I'm pretty critical of what I do not like. And that's, you guys develop your own language. It's like, it's like wine, right? So if, if you're liking a sweet sort of sugary wine, that's, you're probably young and don't, can't appreciate the complexities in a, in a wine or something like that. Things, some things do get better with age, believe it or not. Um, here's more settings, the way you draw it, more metaphor. Look at all those ladders in the settings. The light, the reds rep represent passion. Uh, this was the Moliere. Fragmenting a set, keeping the perspective thing going on it. Here's the perspective thing, very strong in this piece. Just a piece of gossamer fabric for the Tempest. We have all this fabric here we've been using just as a cheapo but central effective a metaphor because the projections can hit it, and away we go. So we're looking for layers of, of metaphor, Randy. And it's, uh, she loves you. And uh, here's just an empty box. Dig it, man, because it's so bold. And they do so. Here's the other side of the box. They put it like a wiped hand on the outside. And here's the other side, blood. So they just turn this box around as a as a setting for this piece. Um, I believe design. If you can't go, <gasps> it's not good design. When you open up your web page, or the curtain goes up, or you see a motorcycle in the street, or you see a car. Or a beautiful man in the street, you go like, you know, or a pretty face in a club, you go like, huh. you know, it's got to be immediate, a second. And that's a good litmus test for design. Otherwise, what, Mary? You might as well go home. If you want to be a designer, you will die. So, uh, this one thing, this is not a design school, I've taught at design schools, but the whole idea is not to be a boring individual and, and start. <clears throat> expressing yourself from the gut again. It's, it's, it's something we had as kids. It's something maybe was beaten out of you by your teachers, your parents, because they want you to learn what everyone else is learning. It's something you have to get back. And fortunately, because of the Internet, you can get it back by seeing a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. It's cumulative. And here's the other end of the box. <coughs> it is not like science. We do not deduce our way slowly. It, by process of deduction to one conclusion, we are looking at a cumulative thing. It's empirical. It's more empirical that then we make our choices from what the greater amount of knowledge you know, the more possible choices you can make. 
so here's the the talk about drafting. Here's the drafting for that box. Kind of simple. The guy doesn't know how to draw. Maybe he does know how to draw, but this is his best way of expressing it. Uh, what's that? That's Phantom. Phantom. There you go. Uh, all that smoke, smoke machine, more sets, more sets, more sets, sets that move. I got it. I'm doing a set right now in the city. I have to use video projection for, so I got to get back. And that's the clock in Prague. I was just in Prague last October, about a year ago. Um, more sets, very simple, minimal, minimal. I like this stuff too. And this is a drawing for that. Um, you are trying to retune a visceral sensibility, gang. By visceral, I mean um, gut. Look at all these things. Very central metaphors, easy lines, well-balanced in the place. Um, this is going from set design into retail design. What? You ever go down uh, like Fifth Avenue on, around Christmas time? No? Who does? Or Soho and, and now? Yeah. Soho's great. You go down the shops. Well, they still do it upscale like in Fifth Avenue and 57th and Fifth Avenue. And you just go down to Rockefeller Center. All the windows are done up. Uh, Bergdorf Goodman. Here's some taking that idea of metaphor in shop design. It's like, Justin, what makes us desire things? This is not a pretty girl. It's it's a tree lighting. What makes us desire something? It's different than everyone else. It has some similarities. Rishi, what, what would make us know what this place is selling? This is retail. This is no longer theater. What? What? You, are you attracted by the price tag, Randy? Yes, yes I am. It's $3 or less, and I'm attracted to it. If it's $30 or Because your girlfriend might say, let's go to Prada to shop. Okay. What if a, a lovely lady, listen up, said, let's go to Prada. There's a shop on Prince and Broadway. I saw a pair of shoes. I heard Prada. Would you go in there yourself? That is price range. It's not about price range. <laughs> Would you allow a well a, 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 a wealthy woman to take you in the prana and buy you shoes? <laughs> so design is universal. Why, why, Mary? Why, uh, Jules, Prada? Why do we think expense and not good design? Listen up. <laughs> it's all the same to you, Mary. Who's been in that Prada shop? Catherine, what about that Prada shop in Prince and Broadway? I feel like if you shop at Prada, you you can at least feel like you belong to a certain group of people. And there's like a lot of different... Listen up. There's a lot of different groups of people that uh, companies market towards. And like if you are 23 and you live in uh, Williamsburg, they're not going to try and sell you Prada because they know you're 23 and you live in Williamsburg. They're going to try and sell you... Like some bag made of recycled. What's what's that famous like, store near like, NYU? It's Urban Outfitters, yeah, right? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna. No, no, I like it. I like Urban Outfitters, I love that and I like their design, like just sheetrock and paint splashed on it and right. stuff like that. But it's it's too bougie for the Williamsburg kids, yeah, right? Yeah, I feel like the people who they market towards, uh, who Prada market toward, markets toward. Uh, would like to believe that they belong to like upper a echelon group of people that is like classy or let's um, uh, because we're wealthy. running on 19 minutes let's give Catherine a hand let's stay here we're continuing